Hey everybody, welcome to another Tip Tuesday. I know it's been a couple of weeks, but I was on vacation, I was traveling, I gave you a break, right? Yeah. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so I've got Josh, our service manager back, our expert of everything, right? We'll go with that, right? All right. <laughs> so something that is not new technology, but it's kind of really starting to circulate around the RV industry is solar power, right? Yes, very popular right now. Right, right. So what I thought we would do is let you talk a little bit about one of the options we have, how exactly it works, some of the things they need to know, what it will power, won't power, that type of thing, and then we'll just go from there. Sound good? Yeah. Uh, so this one actually is just our 120 watt Go Power portable solar panel. So this thing actually uh, has everything that you're going to need inside to just start with a basic solar package. Um, you can see that this will unfold it already has your controller in here that's going to keep you from overcharging a battery or putting too much power into places that we don't want all that power to go to and then you can buy multiple of these and get some y adapters and chain them together to make this more powerful um, the more you go though you may have to do a different controller mm -hmm. uh, but this one right here uh it's 120 watts going to put out between six and seven and a half amps depending on sunlight and 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 what kind of draw is also being taken on it it's also going to matter on what kind of battery you have. So if you have standard 24 uh, series RV marine battery, um, it's going to give you pretty decent power. If you went to a 27 series, just a little bit bigger, you're going to be able to store a little bit more power out of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, so a good example of what this one will do, uh, a lot of newer campers right now have the Everchill 12 volt refrigerator. That's a compressor style, not the old gas, right. uh, you know, just a standard compressor style, but it's, DC voltage, this is enough to maintain that running all day long. So on a 27 series back. If you're going to like, you know, I know that at some of the state parks, some of the national parks, they don't have electric. Right. So you can at least, you're not gonna get your AC or anything. No, microwave, any of the, the not any, not all of the 110 appliances, but if you if you start looking at putting an inverter in to get right. power, you might be able to, you know, small TV or something, if you wanted to right. you know, watch the game or something while you're out in one of the state parks. Uh, you're not gonna be able to run an air conditioner off of a small solar like this. That's gonna take a much larger system. A bigger bank of batteries can be done. Right, right. Uh, but not- So not you're either daisy chaining a lot of these or you're thing, operating. Yeah, all day long it's gonna keep your battery charged. So in the evening when you gotta run lights and stuff, it should last throughout the night for you. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah. So definitely can't do the big appliances. Very important to know. You can if you upgrade your kit. Yeah, a lot of them have residential fridges that are, that are 110 volt or AC voltage now. And so you would need some bigger or at least more panels. Uh, right. Probably go up to 170 watt and a couple of those. And then we could run those, those residential refrigerators. They're actually surprisingly low on average of what they take to run that compressor. Right. Uh, the problem is, is they just they run for so long, so it's going to draw that power down quick. So you need more panels, but it could be done. So I know on my Cougar, I'm already solar prep. Like I just plug it in. I'm, yeah. Are you seeing that on most of the units? Yeah, it's got a lot of the same stop plug in. Again, adapter goes in there, plugs right in. So you don't have to do anything to the and, camper. And most of the places, if you have a different brand of prep, they have adapters to go to that brand. So you don't have to do any wiring or tearing up anything inside the camper to get to the battery. Right. You don't have wires laying out and going up under your battery <laughs> lid and you know, and then you forget to take them off or whatever. No, just plug it right in. Set this where the sun is, uh -huh. uh, which is good about it because you got these that can kind of angle up angle and all that. And you can monitor it throughout the day to, to maximize the sunlight on it. But And then when you're done, fold it up in a nice case, throw it away or throw it in your storage. I know I've got a buddy that has, I don't think it's a clipper, but it's similar to our clipper 12.0, the little small guy that we carry. And he has a few of these and they go boondocking all the time. Oh, yeah, he swears by these things. Radio, and uh, if you have an RV fridge, it's on gas, it'll keep the 12 volt, the DC control board running. So that'll stay running for you all day. Uh, what's some other 12 volt items? Uh, a control board for your water heater, so you'd still be able to do that on gas. Mm -hmm. um, if, it, if it has that style, if it's a direct spark, um, charge phones and stuff while you're there. So uh, see, you're, you're not gonna be totally primitive. If you've right. got one of these, yeah. you can be pseudo primitive, right? Yeah. yeah, you're just not gonna have air conditioning. But. Right. Now, I know we didn't cover everything. I mean, there's a lot with solar power, right? I mean, there's, um, like you said, different panels, there's different sizes. Uh, I know even some of the new Montanas come with the battery banks and all that kind of stuff, don't they? Yeah, and, the, and you're starting to see some lithium batteries put in uh, into the coaches. Very expensive, but 
gonna give you a lot more power, sustainability, I guess it's gonna last longer, It'll give you full power for that maximum time versus the old style of battery. Where you drain battery. It quick. Yeah, where it slowly loses power as it drains down, so you get less and less power right. going to it. But even even those batteries are gonna be, you know, with this on there, gonna keep that up. Right. But, uh, yeah, lots of options now. We're seeing more and more. Uh, we're, I'll be honest, we're still learning a lot about, you know, what it's gonna take to run certain things. Um, how much power do you need? Uh, it's the best way is to probably get it in and let's figure out, let's talk about what you want to run and be able to do, mm -hmm. and then we can kind of base what kind of power or how many panels. And well, and you're going to know a lot more once you know their unit because you're going to know what type of refrigerator they have and all that other stuff. Yeah, it's not a one size fits all, um, although with the portable it kind of is for at least, at the very least, right. charging your battery while, you know, while you're not using it so that you're ready to hook up and leave and all right. that stuff that you might need. So. Right. Well, guys, that was a lot of stuff. I'm sure you have questions, comments. If you do, leave them down below. I'll come bother Josh. I'm not going on vacation or traveling for a while, so I'm going to come bother him every week. As always, thank you, and thank you, Josh. Yeah. Really appreciate it, man. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, have a good one, guys.